Thanks for fun here. Today we're going to make a waterproof rain cover for your backpack. I mean, think of it. You're walking along on the trail and all of a sudden it starts raining on you. What do you do? What do you do? Well, what you do is you get your little handy dandy rain cover out that you made yourself and you cover your belongings. I know I usually put a dry sack inside of my backpack and my backpack is also waterproof somewhat. It's water resistant, I should say. Z-Pack R-Call. So the only stuff I have on the outside, I'm okay with getting wet. And this material is really decent at um, shedding most water, but I don't want to take a chance. So let's make a rain cover today. Let's go. To make a backpack rain cover, you will need a few things to get started. The materials you will need are one yard of waterproof fabric, four feet of shock cord, one cord lock, and the tools are a thread injector, also known as a sewing machine, 100% polyester thread, I prefer the Guterman Mara 70 in the 700 meter spool, a pair of scissors, a ruler tape measure, and some tape such as masking tape. I have provided links to all the materials in my description, as well as a kit you can get from Dutch that bundles all the materials in a single lower cost kit. I believe this project is one of the best ones to try as your first project. If you make any mistakes or don't have pretty stitching, it won't matter since the hems or cinch channels will not be seen when in use. Here are the settings I used for this project on my Genome HD3000. I used a single straight stitch, stitch number 13, the stitch length to 1.5 millimeter and zigzag set to zero. The needle I'm using is a Schmetz ballpoint 116. I prefer the A foot for straight stitching hems and seams like this. The thread tension is set to 2.5 but you may need to adjust your settings depending on material and your machine, most likely on the low side from regular. Pressure dial is set to 2. I use the Guterman Mara 70 for its strength and durability and ultraviolet water and temperature conditions exposed to outdoor gear. All right, so what you want to do is you want to get your material. And again, this stuff is super, super thin. We're going to try to get a measurement on our pack. Want to go ahead and stuff up your sack about what it would be with the, as much stuff as you would carry it at the most, just to make sure that your rain cover will always work. I don't try to put my full winter kit in there because I, I rarely would have my winter kit out when it's in a raining situation, but I always add a couple extra inches anyway, so. I've never had a problem with any of my rain covers I've made making it over. The, the essential thing is the way you do the drawstring around the edge, it'll really, it'll cinch that down around the backpack. So you typically have some excess material. So let's go ahead and get our backpack out that's somewhat representing a max load and set it on the ground. All right. Now, if all you have is a root, uh, tape measure, Obviously, you could just do a square measurement. So what I'd like to do is just use a string. And I'm going top to bottom. And then keeping my finger on that spot where it ended, um, we'll do four and a half foot, okay? So from top to the bottom on this pack, is four and a half feet. So I'm going to find the widest, which I believe is, I think these are guys about tied. And again, make sure you got it loaded up with stuff you would normally have. So I've got things in both pouches. And you can just double check. If you think you got the widest, then, oh, I was wrong. I'm glad I double checked. Oh, this hump here. Wow. Yeah, it would have been way off. Okay. Obviously it works there, works there. So this would be the highest point. Okay. Although if it's raining, that's my rain gear. I would absolutely have that out and it'd be a little skinner, but that's okay. When we are at base camp, we're going to have our, our backpack's going to be strapped to a tree anyway. So you're going to want to make sure it can completely cover the backpack, even in that scenario. Let's see what we got here. 
I'd say we have three feet four inches, but we'll add six inches just like we did with the other one, three foot ten inches. So four and a half feet, three foot ten inches. There's our measurements. All right, guys, one of the things that can be a little difficult with any of these projects, especially when you start talking tarps and hammocks, is the size of the material and having to cut it to size. It, it can be challenging, especially this stuff is so thin and slippery. So it's best, unless you happen to have a really big table, which I've seen there's some guys that have these huge tables that they can do this kind of stuff on. I don't. So I just try to find as good a place on the floor as I can and get my measurements. Now what I'll probably do here is at some point I'm going to, I've got masking tape, I'm going to tape it up and make my marks. I'm going to use the wooden floor as a reference point. This will let us pull that way. It doesn't have to be perfect anyway, so that's why this, this particular one doesn't really matter. When it comes to working on stuff like a tarp or a hammock, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll make templates out of Tyvek, especially when you talk about those cat cut tarps. We have our piece cut. What we need to do now is put corner hems on all four corners and we're going to do a two inch corner hem. And to do that, we're basically just going to come in two inches, roughly, in each direction. And I should probably note, because I'm probably doing it wrong myself before we even get started. Remember, as always with this, there's a shiny side and a dull side. So this is the shiny side. That's the, it's not dull, but it's duller. That's more shiny. Just pick a spot where you can get two inches. Now, oopsie. All right, fine. This stuff is so slippery. I'm actually doing what I normally don't do. All right. Can be a little bit challenging also to get going on this because it's so thin. I can never get the pins in the right order. That's why I just, ah. <laughs> it's such a pain in the butt. But they have a purpose. Oh, okay, it's, it's not doing too bad. When we get to the corner, again, lift the foot. Rotate the material, and I can remove the pan. All right. So once you have the two inch by two inch corner folded over, we're gonna fold it to the tip of the corner like that. I'm just going to do the rest of the corners the same way.
All right, guys, I'm back. So I've gotten the four corners done. And now what we want to do is do a folded hem along the whole side. And at the same time we're doing that, we are going to be creating a little channel. Now I want to note here, I've got a foot that does that rolling. What is it? D. This guy? Yeah. And it'll actually, once you get it going, it curves the material around twice, I think, even. I've just found I have a hard time doing it with this material. So I keep my A foot on. And I do it the hard way. And what you're wanting to do is do a little bit of a fold over first for the fold it over hem. And then you got to make a channel. If you're good, you can do both at the same time and not have to do two sets of stitches. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it going, you just make sure you're feeding a little bit of a rolled hem and you're keeping about the same size of a channel. And if it doesn't look perfect, it's okay because it's just a rain cover. I mean, as long as it's waterproof, right? <laughs> All the parts where you're sewn right now are gonna be cinched up behind the back, uh, up against your back behind the backpack. So it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Just getting it started can be a little tricky. Make sure I got the right. What I find is if you can get that first one going, it's pretty easy to keep fed. If you put a, a crease with your hands, your fingers, I mean, pushing really hard, that'll get you started and then roll over for your shot cord channel. You gotta remember, you gotta be sewing the middle of that little rollover you do. I promise once you get it going, it's not so bad. So I'm just staying right on the edge of this and I'm putting the edge of my fold right here on the slit. So there's a good eighth of an inch or a little bit more from that edge to my needle. So I'm basically dividing that fold in half. But all this up here is being left alone as a channel. Now I find it's easier to work with this when you don't have this material hanging on the ground because look, it's, ca it's causing you, uh, it's torquing, it's pulling it away and it makes it much more difficult to feed. I always try to keep my material up, even rolled if I have to, just where it makes it easier for me to, to manage. Just keep in mind, you don't want to get this material underneath and forget it's there and then sew her in. Been there. All right, I'm gonna speed this process up so you don't have to watch the slowness, but I'm just gonna go around the whole thing now. All right, guys, we got everything hemmed around the whole side. We got the corners, which now we have basically these little shot cord channels. 
And that's what we're going to do next. We are going to take a five foot, or actually technically a four foot, but I like to, I like to start with a little bit more than I know I'm going to need and trim back as I, as I get it. So let me get my little tool. Uh, you can get these at Walmart or online or just about anywhere you find sewing, machine, uh, sewing stuff. You got a pull thing for your finger, a hook, but very importantly, it can be pushed this way and both this little catch and the hook can push through without any resistance. When it comes back this way, it'll automatically flip that little lever back and protect the string you're pulling back out. So what we're going to be doing is that little flap needs to be back and we're just going to start feeding it through. I'll bunch it up here at the finger pole. If you keep some tension on it while you're pulling it, like I just left tension and it just came off. If I, I'm going to keep tension so when I'm pulling it, it's actually pulling it through my hand. Then it stays right on there, easy cheesy. All right, so I got tension. So we got it through one side. All right, this is where it's gonna get a little bit trickier and trickier as we keep going. It's gonna want, this end's gonna to wanna to pull through, so. Put in the comments if you know what I used to use these for. It's to do with hammocks. pull through now. She might try. Oh, she'll try. She'll try. So now what we can do is bunch up. Each time we get a, a side done, just bunch that material up. There. And do it again. All right, guys, we snuck that through. And now I'm going to go ahead and get the little Shot cord thingy in, the little pull stop. I guess I'll have to put in the comments what that is. Double, double draw, oh, that's not a double. A double drawstring pull. <laughs> Jeez. But wait, there's more. It's the one that has the two holes, especially I like using these for 332nd because it's, it's almost impossible to get something this thick through just a single hole. It's either that or you have to get these monsters. I just don't like these big fatties. And I'm still not sure if five foot is too long. Um, typically you do about four foot. That's the standing opening size. So if that needs to be more or less. That was close. Got to be careful when you're testing this until we put that little knot on the end. I guess we can go ahead and do that now, just be safe. I was holding off putting that knot on there because I, I was going to, I figured I'm going to have to trim this. But just as a safety precaution, we'll come back to that and undo it if we need to. So the question is, is this enough? And we'll just have to do a test now. Let's try this out on our backpack. Okay, guys, just like before I have teared this out, uh, zeroed it out for this bin. And let's see how much this backpack cover, rainproof backpack cover weighs 3.1 ounces, 88 grams. All right, guys, let's see how this guy fits. So the, start at the top. 
come down. Now let's go ahead and pull this a little tighter. course you're you can cinch it where your hip like if you're actually wearing the backpack you know you can get it so that it rides nice and I'm going to provide a PDF uh, diagram step-by-step -step directions on in the description of the, the video okay well that's it guys thanks for fun signing off remember to hang your own hang and as always Happy hanging. As I was going over that fair fit carry mountain, I met with Captain Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced my pistol and then produced my rapier. Said stand and deliver for I am a bold deceiver. But you ring dum a do dum a da. Quack for the daddy o. Back for the daddy, oh, there's whiskey in the jar. I counted out me money and it made a pretty penny. I put it in me pocket and... That's it. I ain't got no more.